Oh yeah, that's right. It was a dream. Yeah, that was Thank the dream God. part. Thank God. Folks, uh, welcome to Werewolf Radar, the world's premier paranormal preparedness podcast. My name is Jordan Joel. I am Roger Norquist, the one without the beard. And uh, and I'm Nate Morgan. Nate is not here. Nate is orbiting. Uh, the planet Earth in a black crystal obelisk waiting for somebody to chant the correct words to release him when his powers are needed. Um, today's episode of Werewolf Radar is brought to you by the Monstroco Inquisitor's Glass. When peered through, the small silver jeweler's glass will show you who is lying to you. Surprise, surprise, it's everyone. <laughs> the Monstroco Inquisitor's Glass. Nunchucks of purification sold separately. Could you imagine how do how do you find out? Is it like whisper in your ear or is it like a notification? You when you look through the jeweler's glass, you will see the blackness in their heart. Oh, the, their dark hearts uh, will will shine as brightly as the brightest candle, but in a in a dark flame. Nice, nice. And they, you'll hear the whispers of how they have wronged you, and you will be urged to purify them with the nunchucks of purification sold separately. It sounds like Monstroke is trying to make me a hero. This is uh, I'm what's all known about that. What, what, as, what was that movie? They Live? Yeah. Where he puts yes, on the exactly. glasses? Yes. I want to be that hero, and Monstroke is helping me. This is what's known as. Uh, Vertical integration. Monstroco has <laughs> provided a service that needs a solution that pr- that they also sell. Uh, and that solution is the nunchucks of purification, pure silver nunchucks with uh, kind of lion's paws on the end of each mm. one that the claws are extended on. And you got to, you know, it takes some time to master them. But mostly, honestly, they do a lot of the work themselves. They want to purify. <laughs> they need to purify. Watch yeah. out. You might need purifying yourself mm-hmm. one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Roger, why don't you take the speaking skull first? Because my I'll mouse just open. died and I need to <laughs> charge yeah, it. Yeah, you need to bury your mouse. It's a very sad time over there. I can do anything <laughs> over here. Yes. My poor so, mouse, Mr. Cheezers. I'm going to, in this moment of sadness, mm-hmm. uh, wrap up my deep dive into the extraterrestrial species almanac. Fuck yeah, let's move on. You know, I really love doing this because I, honestly, I'm sad to see it go because there is an element of the Pokemon about it. Yes. Where I simply got to catch them all. Dude, there's, I didn't count, but I, I didn't go over the Procyonans, the Proxima Centaurians, the Sagittarians, the Blue Serarians, the Human Serarians, the Titan Serarians. Good Lord. Uh, super Angels. Super Angels. <laughs> Wait, we were going to talk about them, right? They have like pr- like prayer-based oh, God spaceships damn it. and stuff. All right. So we're going to switch it up a little bit. I remember you showed us that picture. It was, of, it was just a white guy <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with a sword that had M on it. I was like, yeah, this looks... Uh, that this was, one feels that was like St. Michael. This one feels like it's funded by a very specific branch of MUFON. Yeah, that was that was the St. Michael of the Angelic Corpse. Right, right. Yeah, the Angelic Corpse, that's it. <laughs> So let's let's I guess go into the super angels. I'm trying to find exactly where uh, Saint Michael is exactly. I forgot what race he was. <laughs> I just told you, white guy. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the whitest guy, probably the whitest guys of them all. Yeah. We're, well, anyway, we have super angels is what we'll do real quick. And then we're Hit going with those to super angels. Super angels so, sounds like a comic book you would get from Sunday school. I have one of those comics. My lady picks them up all the fucking time. Oof, she loves amazing. them. Amazing. That's really fun. Super angels. Universal origin. Super angels are from the Isle of Paradise. Oh, oh. super angels for their physical characteristics are androgynous beings. Their belief system is that some angels, some created angels in the past believe that ascended beings who achieved status equal to angels did not deserve such universal classification. Super angels work in twos, one ascended angel and one created angel. To set a constant example of both 
fractions can work together harmoniously. Okay. Kind of a duality of being. Right, right. I get it. Cosmic agenda. The super angels work in union with the galactarian alignment. <laughs> to, st- to stamp out abortion and limit voting rights. <laughs> they uh, are also called superb seraphim. Oh. And they are universal guardians, protectors of higher realms, mentors to administering angels and other angelic, angelic sex. Okay. And counselors to the redemption angels from the Lucifer Rebellion, which we go into slightly on this one. This shit is very, uh, very, we're getting very Warhammer here. It's, it's, um, I love it when UFOologists and people really go that like Battlestar Galactica way with things to be like, no aliens were our gods right right, and everything did happen the way it was written right yeah crazy just just more sci-fi than you imagine dude so sci-fi we're getting into it it was said it was said of lucifer you were perfect in all your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you Lucifer was created was a created son and reigned as Satanias Satanias system Santana. sovereign. He was Santana, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, he was Santana mm-hmm. during the early years. Different mm-hmm. dude in the later years, but oh, yes, yeah. it is a Santana as we know him. Together, as a created with, angel. They got together with Rob Thomas. Those were the dark days. <laughs> uh, we're uh, on the Satania. Mm-hmm. Satania system mm-hmm. sovereign earth belongs to this system oh for more than 500,000 years and then he rebelled against un- the universal father and oh his boy. vice vice son Michael oh. okay you thought I was gonna say Jesus I really did <laughs> <laughs> it feels like some season two shit <laughs> Lucifer contested Michael's right to universal sovereignty. Lucifer's trial was lengthy. Did not get a speedy trial. He's not American. They have different laws up in space. Oh boy. You just had he, to sit around and wait for it. He ultimately lost and was imprisoned for 200,000 years on a prison planet. Wow. It is That's not Earth time. as far as this says. Yeah. Then after much Can reflection. You imagine? <laughs> if some like fucking interstellar craft showed up and they're just like hey can we put this guy in san quentin or whatever <laughs> for like you guys already have prison. years <laughs> two thousand years is too long just to run long oh you guys don't live that long okay um 20 years <laughs> uh then after much reflection lucifer was put on trial for his soul death oh he turned oh one third of the angelic kingdom against Michael. Oh boy. All this paragraph was written like an insane man just coming up with different non sequiturs. Sure. Like somebody, somebody posting on Facebook about <laughs> fucking some, some political nonsense. So during the Lucifer rebellion created super angel Galvalia, and ascended a, an ascendant super angel mm-hmm. Galatina. Okay. No, Galatia. All and right. their team measured the various planetary consciousnesses to calculate the precise number of those who wished to join the rebellion. Wow. Seems like you should have done that before the rebellion. Seems like a good idea. But you're the angels here, not me. <laughs> they, along with the emergency. Mel <clears throat> Melchizedek 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 thank you also collected antidotes from other worlds in prior turmoil on how to manage the rebellion okay super angels also monitor energy fluctuations across the universe with its bandwidth growth from oh. broadcast stations across the cosmos they transmit and receive celestial broadcast universal information vital to all unified worlds that's the galactic mm-hmm. alignment that's how they can tell if you're jerking off or not they know they're watching <laughs> And they come to Earth and punish you. They're wondering why you're not smiling enough. Isn't this supposed you to be have, fun? 
You have summoned the super angel with your boner sin. <laughs> <laughs> Citizens on their home worlds gather in outdoor coliseums to hear the broadcast in a social setting. Oh. Interaction and stimulating conversations ensue about Ooh. a wide range of topics on any given day. Super Angels will again broadcast to Earth <laughs> once the planet has rejoined Universal Society. Oh, okay. It's just such a funny fucking name for aliens. The Super Angels <laughs> are upon you. Or the Superb Seraphim. <clears throat> yes. Um, wait a minute. When Earth rejoins? Yes. So we used to be part of it. We're not anymore. Whoa, uh, this is happened? the first time that I've known that we were part of a universal society and now have to rejoin. I don't know where that is in the book. We're not reading this one page at a time. We're reading this like naked lunch. Right, right. It's all you over were, the place. You were thrown out after the advent of what you humans call Comedy Central. Boo! I like the early years. It's a sin. It was. That's what made it feel good. Technology. So super angels have belts. <laughs> and they're used big deal so do and i and they're used to travel into the spirit or physical world they're okay. like batman they got belts oh, with all shit. sorts of shit one dial does belts. that all right by locking the dial they are able to maintain any form for as long as they require in whatever dimension they want to work in you want to hear something kind of embarrassing yep i say that i have a belt I can't wear belts. I have a nickel allergy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm happier without them, but it was, I was just talking a lot of game there. I'm really impressed that they have belts. They travel in a singular or group Merkaba vehicle or mm -hmm. in Galactarian craft. Consciousness oh. abilities. Super angels have avatar and solar consciousnesses. Whoa, sick. That means they can like project a soul man. It's that duality. No, that's that... not a soul man. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a sweet like 70s dude jumps out of you and is like that was the show butt. dan Aykroyd made in the late 90s. It was called Soul Man, and he oh, played that's right. a preacher. Ah, uh, that's right. Holy shit. It was Damn. average <laughs> but it did not deserve to go on for a whole season yeah. i am i agree with that but is is a soul avatar is that where they can project like uh like those celestial fist monks where you have like like another guy that can like go out and punch people kind of yes it's once again the the super angels work in that duality they have a physical avatar at almost all times and then they okay. can then shoot their consciousness to do whatever the right. fuck and they, i guess in that situation you could make it a super 70s disco pimp and that would could. fucking rule they the super angels speak the light essence language their super angelic consciousness works directly with paradise sun Archangel ah. Michael and other paradise sons. Their minds okay. are divine. Uh -huh. Dimensional capacity. Super angels are masters of the multiverse with hierarch hi hierarchical permission. They can travel to any of the seven super universes or okay. into <laughs> one of the 700,000 local universes. Oh. Each super universe houses. Wow. Crazy. What are the super universes? Does it say anywhere? Um, Beach universe. Let's go, Cowboy universe. Let's go to the appendix number C. Candy universe. Super universe is not in the appendix. Okay, that's fine. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, no, Keep here going. we go. Seven super oh. universes. Within each super universe, there are 700,000 local universes. Super universes. Uh, one, Flowington. Flowington. Flonington. Oh. Okay. Super Universe 2, Nottington. Okay. Super Universe 3, Bellington. Okay. No, Bennington. Blennington. Okay. These all sound like suburbs of Seattle. Super Universe 4, Sun uh -huh. Hooten. Uh, except for that one. Super Universe 5, Shreeton. Which one We're are back we at? to Super Universe. I'll get to it actually. Uh -huh. Super U actually doesn't say. Land. Super Universe 6, Evan Tunton. Ah. Super Universe 7, Orvington. Okay. 
Earth's registry number in the okay, so we're in Overton or oh, Overonton. Okay. Overonton. I'm gonna start answering the phone like that. Jordan <laughs> Dahl, Overton Super Universe. Earth's registry number in this super universe of inhabited planets is are you ready for it? Five trillion three hundred forty two billion four hundred eighty two million three hundred thirty seven thousand six hundred sixty six. Did you write that down? That will come up. I you need to write that down. We will be testing S- everyone. Write that down and use it the next time you answer the phone. So I'm going to go finish up on Put one on every more. piece of mail that you write. To end <laughs> I think I might have to now, state, to be honest. Country, super universe. Super no, universe. Universe, then, universe. Then super, super universe. universe. Super universe directory code. <laughs> Species rank star sign. So Blood now type. on on the last alien star race nation we're going to talk about, uh, it was going to be the Palladians and the Renegade Palladians. Oh, but like you the, then like the I then said the super Romulans. aliens and we got distracted. Rightfully so. That was crazy. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know a lot about the Palladians. They're they're kind of like the the Nordic aliens. They're very um, like Western thought of how Greeks looked. You know, very I, white, yeah, not Mediterranean I gotta say, at all. A lot, a lot of these uh, aliens come off as like like some some pretty uh, like Mormon pamphlet looking. Yes, did you want to see a picture of a Palladian family? Yes, more than anything. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> go to our YouTube, everyone. Holy that, shit. That's the place to watch the podcast. Holy shit. It's Brooke Shields, it's Fabio, and their child, Renesmee. the Dalai Lama. <laughs> yeah, no, the Dalai Lama. Yep. <laughs> and it does have Renesme vibes, too. What a, what a pull. Wow. If they, if the aliens showed up and they were all smiling at me like that, I would run away. We now, noticed you from across the universe, and we liked your vibe. <laughs> the Palladians, uh, we've talked about them in different ways. They're one of the main aliens, uh, alien peoples that have been known to come to Earth allegedly. Uh, I don't think they really abduct people, but they more so are on that side of like they want to see us grow into a universal star nation with them. We're not abducting anyone. We simply invited them back to our houseboat for some Campari. And they're about five to six feet tall. Like, they're very human-like. We're very human-like, right down to the genitals. Look. Oh! Be not afraid. (laughs) So... What we're going to end on is not the Palladians, but something we've never talked about before, like most of this book, <laughs> the <laughs> renegade Palladians. Taxes. Taxes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, save 30% of your income just in case. <laughs> so renegade Palladians. Okay. Origin, renegade Palladians come from the Pleiades star cluster. Okay. Physical characteristics, renegade Palladians are powerful beasts. Evil nice. titans standing 8 to 13 feet tall. Oh, wow. Okay. They manipulated their gene pool to produce warriors built like tanks Sweet. and to alter RPG tanks, not like tanks. All oh, right, right, right. Okay. Because I started to put treads on this person, and I was yeah, like, that's yeah, yeah. not what they meant. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right. to alter their original hair and eye colors to black and brown. Oh, boy. I... <laughs> so they're just not as white, according to this book? They're a surly white. They're like Problematic. a... Oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. They're more like, a, a, I guess, a, if if everyone is homogenous, which that's not how any peoples are, versus yeah. like the Nordic whiteness, these guys are now like Romanian, like right, Vlad, right. Temp- Vlad the Impaler. Vlad Tepes, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, very much so, right? That man... Yeah, totally. ...weirdly looks like Vlad the Impl- Impaler in my head. Much, much hunkier. This guy, he doesn't have the creepy smile, and he's wearing, like, uh, like gator skin epaulets. Mm-hmm. This I would is, have a beer a with this man. This is a much hunkier vibe. I, I don't know. He's got, he's, he seems a little intense. I hanging know. Out, His story's going to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with him seems like it would be a hard time. Like, the other guys seem like they'd, they'd just, like, 
like too much touching and they would be mm-hmm. close talkers. This guy seems like he would be like, I have seen a thousand stars die. I will I will drink your earth beer, but I will tell I will tell you of rivers of blood, Earth man. And it's like, all right, all right, can we just all right. I'll just like, kind of no, to relax. Yeah. What are you doing in this bar? <laughs> Belief system. The renegade Palladi- Palladians believe in service to self. They believe in their dark undermonic laws to gain power. Okay technology and material wealth they defile all that is good and righteous and mock the cosmic law of wow war. so this is this is just christianity these guys are demons and the other guys are the angels a lot of this is just kind of christianity now that you think a little yeah. bit about it and yeah the fact that the angelic corpse are always fighting the renegade demonic reptilians yeah. and yeah they defy all that is good, uh, righteous. They mock the cosmic law of one, but who doesn't? I mean, come on. <laughs> We're doing it right now. They have no clue how their afterlife will be confined to the dark astral universe, imprisoned. In, we, are, we are these people. They no don't know clue? what happens after they die. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's us. They choose to correct their karma. If they choose to correct their karma, they can re-enter the reincarnation cycles. Ah, Those okay. new challenging lifetimes will be designed by their celestial centuries. A little touch of Buddhism in there. Cosmic Agenda, Renegade Palladians are uh, are aligned with and work alongside the Orion Empire. Alongside Those are the, the re- NRA. The reptilians. That can't be right. <laughs> Even though even though they want to please their reptilian comrades, renegade giants will someday try to overthrow them and oh. wipe out as much of their race as they can. Their oh. ultimate goal is to control the universe and rule it with one iron fist. Whoa, begin work on the iron fist. <laughs> Just Angel- floating in space. Angela just punches planets who, who planets. speak up. <laughs> the planet puncher. It doesn't destroy it. It just gives it a good it just hit. Gives it a black eye. All of Australia will be bruised. Angelic Corpse psychic detectives monitor the thoughts of highly dangerous malevolent beings in the universe through a calm through a calmative cal- cumulative. You know what? Through monitoring known as reflectivating. This monitoring is not an invasion of private thoughts, although it definitely sounds like it, it using does. your words. It heightens the intuition that they have on that person. So they're not supposedly entering the thoughts, but they're all like, that's a lot of negative energy you're giving off right now. Mm-hmm. What you up to? Yeah, right. OK, we noticed you from across the universe and liked your vibe. <laughs> they have monitored the Orion Empire as a whole, and their intuition is that the renegade Palladians, who are building up their army in great numbers through genetic engineering births mm-hmm. of males, will someday <laughs> make their move to defeat the Draconians. The Greys are next on their e- extinction agenda. Just their plan for world domination is to just breed dudes. Just breed dudes. Yeah, that'll do it. Those guys are a bunch of assholes. Technology. The Renegades fleet is oval shaped and black. Hey, cool. Motherships look like thin wafers with dome protrusions on the underbelly. Love a dome. These pod-like facilities are designed as genetic labs, prison cells for capturing species, Mm -hmm. sleeping quarters, food preparation areas, farms, (laughs) and etc. The main floor is the command and weapons center. The intergalactic man cave. (laughs) Inward grooves on the roof of the mothership store the fleet, which is in the mothership. Obviously, my bad. Right, right, right. Which are able to take off on a second's notice. Always okay. prepared. Yeah. These fleet Is... craft can be manned or unmanned. Well, that makes it easier. Mm-hmm. I was thinking they were like, just had a bunch of pilots just sleeping in their vehicles, ready to go. Also, if they can... <sighs> no, whatever, I'm not going to get into it. Dude, gonna... <laughs> this does sound like... Cheesebot in the chat... This does sound like a Stargate SG One's good or whatever. I forgot <laughs> how does. to pronounce it. <laughs> yes. Wow. Even kind of looks like it if you remember. Not not the main hero, uh, mm-hmm. Gaul. 
But that's uh dang it, which one was it? That's kind of what they all look like. Yeah, a little bit. Only the hero one had no hair. No, right. I think a lot of them had no hair. Anyway, that's for another podcast, our S Stargate SG1 fan podcast. <laughs> so conscious abilities or consciousness abilities. The renegade dark telepathic chatter is aligned to under demonics, the opposite of harmonics. Ah, okay. They use a hive mind. Well, I mean, musically, I think that's not how it works, but we're talking science, and I don't know how that works at all. They use <laughs> a hive mind to interact as a race to see right. who came up with ways to undermine the Galactarian alignment and its subdivision, the star seed alignment, which okay. were a star seed, Jordan, the right. humans. I mean, it still sounds like the name of the like United Airlines premier membership <laughs> thing. I'm part of the star seed alliance. I get so, to sit in the bad, in the bad lounge and eat terrible crepes. So they're all in hive mind all the time eating crepes mm -hmm. <laughs> and housing crepes. constantly proposing diabolical scenarios mm -hmm. to gain control over worlds and outdo the draconians. Yeah, making no girls allowed signs to yeah, put on yeah. their ships. Basic shit. Yeah. Dimensional capacity, the renegades use the dark matter universe for travel. Okay, see, we need to find out about this shit. The dark matter universe? Oh, it's yeah. something we should definitely. For those of you listening that don't know, um, in theory, according to gravitational math on the universe, there's a lot of gravity that can't be accounted for. Mm -hmm. And that's what dark matter is. The matter right. that all this gravity is kind of would have to be there for this gravity to be. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, scientists believe that it's generated by your mama. I think <laughs> is is the technical term. And that's say. our episode. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I did it again. <laughs> Never not going to do better than that one. <laughs> so they use the dark matter universe for travel and yeah. can create temporary dimensional pockets for their craft to hide and take oh, refuge. God, that's so fucking cool. I want one of those belts so I can be like. Like, oh, I want to go to the deli to get a sandwich, and I just, like, bloop into a hole in the floor, and then I walk out of, you know, the drinks cabinet at the deli, and I get my sandwich, and then, oh, no, here comes the cops. They're trying to bust me for illegal technology, and then bloop, <laughs> I hide in a pocket universe with a fucking sandwich that I'm eating. What are they going to do? Find me? Nothing. You can hide in there for infinity. Infinity. It's nice. It's climate controlled. Sure, there are horrors that lurk between the stars, but... Of course, that's just something you deal with. You know what they like? A sandwich, and they can have a bite. <laughs> well, that, Jordan, I'm going to I'm gonna pass you the speaking skull in just Please. a second. That has been the Extraterrestrial Species Almanac, in parentheses, MUFON. Very and cool. What a wild book. It's like a whole, I don't know where the money goes. This Craig Compombasso, mm -hmm. I hope you're not a bad dude, but I gave him 10 bucks. It's been a thrill to read. I love the ridiculous pictures of white mm -hmm. aliens in this They're, book. <laughs> they, are, they are pretty white, uh, which, you know, doesn't put a lot of points in the not a bad dude column. But, you know, <laughs> we give you the benefit of the doubt and say that this is the, uh, the okay, this is at least looks like an Egyptian person. This is the blue um, Serarian being. There's some fun cool. pictures. This is the one. That guy's eyes are <laughs> independent from his face. Anyway, if you have this book or if you've been listening, for the past few episodes tell us what your favorite uh star race was mm -hmm. in our on our uh twitter page a lot not more. twitter page on our twitter post and whatnot sorry x x a lot more um a lot more aliens that are just a guy than i would have expected yeah no aliens are just well this guy's more than just all right a guy. okay well that's yeah that's some sort of slenderman yeah um, but they're just right. regular people some of them are well, light people if you some will, of them are uh, some of them are Steve Buscemi <laughs> <laughs> with pouty lips. Um, will you uh, 
pass me the speaking skull through yes, yes, sorry. the dark Let matter me universe. Put the uh, the dark matter containment field around us so it doesn't destroy the skull again okay. because we can't fall asleep. There you go. And I will reach into the cold infinite possibility that is the dark matter universe and I will pull out the speaking skull. Oh, nope, wrong skull. Hang on. Uh, here it is. Okay, there was another skull in there. Let's not ask any questions about that. I would like to talk to you today about astral projection. Yes. What do you know about astral projection? Not a lot. I know some little bits on it, uh, and I might be getting this wrong, but I believe Edgar Casey could astral project. He went yeah. to Venus. He mm -hmm. went underneath the Sphinx, which we talked a little bit about mm -hmm. in the Grave Nugget, but that's about it. Found the archives down there. Uh Yes, astral projection, and we talked a little bit about it, about it being, uh, you know, <laughs> and a projected soul monk where you can send your astral self out to do things while your body remains in one place, and your your astral self can do things that your body might not be able to do, uh, such as phase and fly and, uh, you know, exist forever in a world of pure energy. But this is from AuraHealth.io. This is How to Astral Project, a step-by-step -step guide written by the Aura Health team. I don't know if Aura yes. Health is a cult, but their website has given off big cult vibes. I know that they use uh, AI art as part of their website, so we know that they're bad people. Just Everything's kidding. a cult, man. I'm in the <laughs> cult of so many rpgs you know like <laughs> I'm in the when cult it comes Baldur's out Gate i have three for sure yeah when it comes out i have to come because the call was made and now i'm mm -hmm. on act three level 12 and i've just killed some lady's dead brother oh boy yeah uh astral projection what is astral projection all about to put it simply astral projection is the process of separating your mind in parentheses consciousness from your physical body and traveling to realms outside of our normal world so mm -hmm. you could go to beach universe you could go to cowboy world nice you could go to um you know skateboard heaven skateboard hell Ooh, uh, skateboard hell you jump over mm -hmm. flames though yeah but you jump a, over lasers and light in skateboard hell or heaven yeah heaven is a half pipe hell <laughs> god damn it i wanted hell, to get there eventually <laughs> hell is the full the full loop um, cause you can't get all the way around it. Only one guy ever did it. That guy's name, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might know him as Tony Hawk. <laughs> um, we've come to your planet in search of the Messiah, the one you call Tony Hawk. Um, okay. Pronounce that correctly. <laughs> Uh, separating your consciousness from your from your physical body, travel to different worlds. Uh, different techniques can be used to activate this amazing skill, which frequently comes with floating sensations, vibrations, and even lucid dreams. Now, I might have missed you saying this in a direct line, but it makes it seem like anyone can astral project this isn't anyone like a skill locked project. to mediums a, or something it's a, no it's a skill that's locked within your psyche that you can unlock by doing some of the techniques uh presented to us here on AuraHealth.io. i'm happy to hear this because i've always wanted to leave this plane and fart in another there. plane you just needn't you just needn't fear that's that's my problem. I'm afraid to do it. Whether I know it or not, when I try to do it, there's part of me that's like, no. <laughs> um, time travel. When we go back in time, we discover that astral projection was a practice that was accepted by many different societies and belief systems. The Egyptians and Greeks, among others, saw astral projection as a gateway to unlock mysteries beyond our world, a means to connect with other dimensions and unravel the universe's secrets. Astral projection offers a variety of possible advantages. In addition to the thrill of exploring other dimensions, cowboy world, cowboy world, it can strengthen your connection to the cosmos, promoting spiritual development while also opening your eyes to new, sper new pers pers perspectives and providing insights into your own journey. So uh, they also mentioned time travel, and I was really hoping they were going to touch on that a little bit more because lots of people tend to be able to use astral, astral projection as a uh, as a form of time travel. Yes. You can go back in time and witness things by accessing just, the Akashic Records. I just realized from you describing this type mm -hmm. of astral projection kind of that is that what happens in end time? 
Does he astral project his ass into the past to love oh that woman? Maybe. Wow. I mean, that is a good thing to use it for. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best it, Christopher Reeve movies. Yeah. Very bad. It doesn't say here that you can specifically use your astral form to bone down. To but bone down a beautiful woman in a painting. I would assume that that's... Uh, a big part of it. Okay, uh, we will talk about some time travel a little later on because we have the time today. Uh, I want to tell you guys about a very interesting CIA document about astral projection. Shut up. The CIA, oh, of course, the CIA yeah, got buddy. into it. Absolutely. So uh, this is how to set up for astral projection. You have to create a tranquil space. The ideal okay. atmosphere is to uh, is the first step to a successful astral projection voyage. Find a quiet area. It's no interrupting interruptions for your practice. Candles or dim lighting can create a soothing atmosphere. Aroma aromas like chamomile, which I first thought said guacamole. <laughs> 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 aromas like guacamole or lavender i mean can first help you of all, relax if guac calms no you down. sublime posters why does it say that because sublime sucks all right fair enough and they're part um, of the lineage of punk music that i'm that i'm a big fan of but they suck sublime rules uh, oh this is what breaks up the podcast yeah yeah <laughs> it's people don't like to admit it they got wrongly maligned because the uh the the frat boy contingent took up their banner but uh of bradley knows a genius okay uh along with the physical setup create a relaxing space where you can escape from outside distractions so a blanket fort dude blanket fort in the bathroom with some guac fuck yeah i'm there and a fucking crazy sublime poster on the wall. I just, <laughs> they were, they, they grew up idolizing the Minutemen okay. and then okay. they were all like, all right. no, we're going to do eight minute songs instead. Yeah, and the Ziggins. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Relaxation techniques. Being in a deep state of relaxation is necessary before beginning astral projection. Numerous techniques, including meditation, deep breathing, gradual muscular relaxation can help you shit your pants. No, so I'm not it doesn't say lie. that. Having having done yoga and meditation and basic mm-hmm. working out over the past few years since the pandemic, you it does well, like when you're good and like actually breathing well and like your mm-hmm. eyes are closed and you're just kind of like sitting there in like any type of calm your head does some crazy shit like it, it does feels, some wild stuff it feels wild i've asked and then i shit my before. pants uh, on accident and then you shoot your pants that's how you can tell i did it on accident when i was a kid i uh i fe- the first thing that i remember feeling about it was that it felt like my bed was really low it felt like my bed became even with the ground yeah and then it kept going down and down and down until it was like the bottom of the ocean level and then i realized that it, that's not what it was it was that i was above the bed and it wasn't that the bed had gone low it's just that I had gone high. Yeah, your, anyway. your, your consciousness has risen. You yeah. evolved. Uh, you're able to let go of other distractions when you concentrate on a certain thing or concept. Deep breathing is another useful technique. Slowly inhale and exhale, focusing your attention on the internal movement of each breath. Progressive muscle relaxation includes purposefully contracting and then relaxing various muscle groups to relieve tension. Okay. Identify your goal. As with any spiritual activity, deciding on your objective before beginning astral projection mm-hmm. is essential. Which we've already this, agreed. We're going to bang that lady in the past. We're bang that lady <laughs> from in time. This could entail establishing a precise objective you hope to realize or just having a general desire to explore and learn more about the universe. So honestly, astral projecting as you get better at it can be its own goal. You know, you can be like, I just want to get out there. Uh, No matter what you intend, be sure it's crystal clear in your head before moving on. Having a clear purpose helps you stay focused and motivated throughout your practice. You don't want to get out in the astral plane and then just lose your motivation and end up, you know, astrally projecting to the couch and watching fucking this fool for 12 hours, even though it's a great show. Uh Great show. Great show. It it also encourages communication with the universe and your higher self. Make sure your goals align with your values and beliefs by engaging in some self-reflection. During your practice, this alignment will keep you grounded and focused. 
simple steps to guide you through this incredible experience. Here we go. First, find your space. Begin by picking a calm and comfortable spot. Dim the lights, play gentle music, can't be sublime. And no, it can items. be actually. We, it can if that, I'm warming makes, up if that to it. relaxes you. Uh, <laughs> have items that make you feel serene around you. Doesn't say that it should be a bong, but it's implied. Uh, no, I think you're not supposed to be on drugs. I think it might, if you, everyone's different, but I mm -hmm. do think that drugs stop from that although if you take enough peyote your brain stops you're out there that shit your fucking mind will launch you out of there please like only a, do it with a shaman who knows what's up and can help like, you in the freakiest of times like a hamburger shooting out of a slippery bun <laughs> <laughs> uh relax your mind and body take a moment to do deep breathing exercises again through a bong uh, inhale positivity, exhale stress. <laughs> it's really sounding like they're telling like a to bomb. Smoke <laughs> Get comfy and let go of any tension. Close your eyes and imagine floating on a soft cloud in space. Feel weightless and at ease. As you relax, you might experience a halfway point between wakefulness and sleep. It's like standing on the edge of your dreams. This is the hypnagogic state. This is where you might uh, feel afraid. You might see and hear things that are strange and make you want to jump back into your body. You have to keep going. Next step, when you reach that hypnagogic stage, visualize a shimmering cord connecting your consciousness to your body. It's like your lifeline during astral travel. So it's just like when you dive, you'll sometimes have a rope that'll help you get mm -hmm. back to the surface. Same thing. Next step, enter the astral plane. You do this by opening your eyes in this new space. Picture vibrant landscapes and boundless beauty. Meet entities and explore. You might come across interesting beings. Chat, learn. Embrace the wisdom they offer. Oh, what if I embarrass myself? You won't. What you won't. That's I... not how it works in the astral plan. Oh, you mean I can just say whatever? No faux pas? say pause? something and they'll be like, ha, 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 you must be from Earth. I am. Cool. Try That's... these mind berries. Then I just trip balls for eternity. <laughs> oh, no, I'm <laughs> tripping. Oh, no, I astrally projected in the astral plane. We're um, in some inception shit right now. Let your imagination run wild as you explore the astral plane. It's a canvas of limitless possibilities. They reference the movie uh, What Dreams May Come in this yep, yep, document yep. a number of times. Awful movie. And it's kind of like that. <laughs> awful awful Decent movie book, filled, with, filled with great emotion and, uh, and hope and sadness. Yeah, it's, Fear, it's a lot. This, this next uh, step is important, and this is what I struggle with. Fear and anxiety are common hurdles in astral projection. Remember, you're in control. Trust yourself to explore new realms safely and confidently. You expressed a little bit, Roger, where you were like, what if I make a fool of myself out there? That's fear and anxiety telling the, you that you can't access the astral realm. Oh. You can, man. It's like jumping into VR. This is your fucking experience. The VR made me sick. Okay, well, hopefully this doesn't. This doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling nervous about the unknown is natural. However, don't let fear and anxiety limit your astral potential. Practice relaxation techniques like meditation, deep breathing, and yoga to calm your mind and prepare for the journey. Visualize a peaceful spot before you start. Real or imagined, it provides a sense of safety, helping you navigate the new dimensions with ease. So pick your starting spot, pick your, your starting level, your, uh, it could be, uh, you know, a tutorial zone from a video game. That's where, that's where you're going to, you're going to start out. You know, nobody's going to be there. You're going to be able to gotcha. get used to the area and kind of your powers. You can mm -hmm. fly, you can turn your hand into blade and shield or hot dog and mustard and eat your hands and they'll be fine. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but it feels like it could be. It seems like it. Yeah. I don't see anything that would stop this possibility. Stay focused and present in any spiritual endeavor. Focus matters, avoid distractions and keep a clear mind throughout astral projection. Set an intention before you get begin, which we talked about, whether a goal or a curiosity for the unknown, it guides your purpose and keeps you on track. Stay aware of your surroundings during the projection. 
It can be intense, but grounding yourself in the present maintains control. Keep that silver cord active. You know, okay. it's, that's, it's like a, it's almost like a periscope, except you, you're, you're on the other side. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we're right now, we got a lifeline. We're heading into Jane Seymour's butt and everything is <laughs> going to be great. That's who the lady was. I looked it up. <laughs> Uh, finally, regular practice pays off. Astral projection, like any skill, needs practice. Make it a routine in your spiritual journey to deepen your understanding over time. Choose a daily time slot for practice, minutes or hours. It depends on you. Consistency deepens your spiritual connection and navigation sp skills. Keep an open mind on every journey. Learn from each unique experience and grow spiritually. And then at the end is a commercial for Aura, your one-stop app for mind mindfulness. Let me go look up the app real quick. <laughs> However, now that we know how to astrally project, yes. uh, it comes easier to some than others. Some people um, learn it as children and don't even realize that it's something strange. They just figure everybody can do this thing. And uh, sometimes it goes away because they don't practice. Sometimes it gets more powerful as they grow older. Uh, there are lots of strange stories that involve astrally projecting. One of the stranger is an it. actual CIA document from an That's interview right. That took place in on May 22nd, 1984. The title of this document, Mars Exploration. Yeah, we talked about this. Actually. We have talked about this. We're going to revisit it because Please. it's fucking cool. It's fucking crazy. And I probably said I, it was one of my segments and I probably said like a crazy person, but it's so crazy. Yes. Uh, method of site acquisition. Sealed envelope coupled with geographic coordinates. The sealed envelope was given to the subject immediately prior to the in interview. The envelope was not opened until after the interview. In the envelope was a three by five card with the following information. It said, the planet Mars, time of interest, approximately one million years B.C., Selected geographic coordinates provided by the parties requesting the information were verbally given to the subject during the interview. Those coordinates, if you'd like to check it out on Mars, 727-101 by 604-908. All right, let me go to Google Mars. I'll type that in. That's 727-101 by 604-908. God, I can't wait to find out what it looked like back then. Right now, it's an apartment building. So this is the monitor. Um, all right, now, using the information in the envelope I provided, exclusively focusing your attention now, using the information in the envelope, focus on 40.89 degrees north, 9.55 degrees west. Oh, and so, by the way, anyone listening, you can go to Google Mars and do this and see where they're looking. Hell Yeah. Uh, the subject responds, I want to say it looks like, uh, I don't know, it sort of looks like I kind of got an oblique view of a pyramid or pyramid form. It's very high. It's kind of sitting in a large depressed area. Monitor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> subject. Okay, then. It's yellowish, uh, okra colored. I think they probably mean ochre. All right, move in time to the time indicated in the envelope I've provided you and describe what's happening. I'm tracking severe, severe clouds, more like a dust storm. Uh, it's geologic problem. Seems to be like, a, just a minute, I've got to iron this out. It's really weird. Monitor, just report your raw perceptions at this time. You're still early in the session. I'll try to do different voices for them so I don't have to say who's, who's speaking. I'm looking at a, a after effect of a major geologic problem. Okay, go back to the time before the geologic problem. That's a good voice. Um, total difference. It's uh, before there's no, uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, hell. It's like mountains of dirt appear and then disappear when you go before. See uh, large flat surfaces, very... Uh, smooth angles walls they're really large though i mean they're megalithic all right at this period in time now before the geogra geologic activity look around in and around this area and see if you find any activity i'm seeing uh it's like a perception of a shadow of people very tall thin 
It's only a shadow. It's as if they were there and they're not there anymore. Go back to a period of time when they were there. Um, it's like I get a lot of static on the line and everything. It's breaking up all the time. Very fragmentary pieces. Just report the raw data. Don't try to put things together. Just report the raw data. Give me I that raw data. Seeing, I want it raw, uncooked. I, I just keep seeing very large people. They appear thin and tall, but they're very large and uh, wearing some kind of strange clothes. All right. Now, holding in this time period, holding in this time period, I want to move from your physical location in space to another physical location. But in this time period, move now to 46.45 north, 353.22 east. Move in this time to 46.45 north, 353.22 east. Deep inside of a cavern, not a cavern, more like a canyon. Um, I'm looking up, up the sides of a steep wall that seemed to go up forever. And there's like a, a structure with a, it's like a wall of a canyon itself has been carved. Again, I'm getting a very large structure. No, uh, no, intricacies, huge sections of smooth stone. Do the structures have insides and outsides? Yes, they're very, it's like a rabbit warren, corners of rooms. They're really huge. I don't feel like I'm standing in one. It's just really huge. Perception is that the ceiling is very high, walls very wide. 22 minutes pass. Yes, that would be correct. All right, I'd like to move... Oh, no, it's been 22 minutes since they started. All right. I'd like to move now to another location nearby. He says that would be correct. Like that's uh, confirming some kind of knowledge they have, which is. Yeah, really that's uh, all of this makes me think such crazy thoughts where like, yeah, this this is a legitimate CIA project. Of course, you can't ever trust anything out of the CIA. Their expertise mm -hmm. is making up documents. Mm -hmm. And. But if this is legitimate and actually done, then, yeah, they have prior information to this. Also, yeah. why these areas? Why this specific time? Right. Why do they have this information? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Move from this point in this time to 45.86 north, 354.1 east. They have uh, appears to be the end of a very large road. And there's a marker thing that's very large keep getting Washington Monument overlay. It's like an obelisk. All right, from this point then, let us move to another point. Move now to 35.26 north, 213.4.24 east. And then he repeats it. It's like I'm in the middle of a huge circular basin of a range of mountains almost all the way around. Very ragged, ragged mountains, very tall. Basin's very, very, very large. Scale seems to be off or something. It's just really big. Everything's big. I understand the problem. Just continue. <laughs> see, right angle corner to something, but that's all. I don't see anything else. Okay, then let's move into a little different place. Very close. Move from the point you are now in this time to 34.6 north, 213.09 east. The cluster of squares up and down. Um, it's like you want to make them square anyway. They're almost flush with the ground and it's like they're connected. Something very white or reflects light. It's, it's starting to make less and less sense. Uh, what's your position of observation as you look at this thing that reflects light? I'm a oblique left angle. Sun is uh, Sun is weird. Look back down at the ground now, and we're going to move just a little bit from this place, just a little bit from this place, 34.57 north, 212.22 east. It's like I can just perceive uh, uh, like a radiating pattern of some kind. It's like some really uh, strange intersecting kind of roads that are dug into valleys, you know, where a road is just a little below the edge. Tell me about the shapes of these things. They're like real neat channels cut. They're very deep. It's like the road went down. So it's, he's talking about like roads that are kind of carved into the planet's surface. Okay. Now I have, I notice electrically you're nulled out a little bit and I want you to stay deep and recapture your focus here. That's crazy. That makes it sound like they they have some kind of monitoring machine on him. Oh yeah. I bet he's hooked up to so many diodes all over his body. Sure. It's really tough. It seems like it's just always very sporadic. 
I realize that. It's very important that you maintain your focus. I have a movement exercise again for you, and this is some considerable distance away. So holding the focus in time, remember the focus in time that you had before and moving now to 15 degrees north, 198 degrees east. Take some time and get back deep. See the um, intersecting, uh, whatever these are, are aqueduct type things, these rounded bottom carved channels like road beds. See, uh, see the pointed tops of something in the horizon. Even the horizon looks funny and weird. It's like a uh, different misty, like it's really far away, very vague. Uh, it says, okay, another movement, another movement now to 80 degrees south, 80 degrees south, at 64 degrees east, 64 degrees east. See pyramids, can't tell if it's the overlay or not because they're different. Okay, do these pyramids have insides and outsides? Um, um, both got, and they're huge. It's really, uh, it's an interesting perception I'm getting. I think that he's losing his ability to move accurately, but he is attracting attracted to things that are interesting. So we're going to go with his own. We're going to let him go ahead and explore what seems to be interesting to him rather than moving on the targets indicated here. It's filtered from storms or something. Say that again, subject. They're like shelters from storms. These structures you're seeing, yes, they're designed for that. All right, go inside one of these and find some real activity to tell me about. This is at 37 minutes into the experiment. Different chambers, but they're almost stripped of any kind of furnishings or anything. It's like a strictly functional place for sleeping, or that's not a good word, hibernation some form i can't i get real raw input storms savage storm and sleeping through storms tell me about the ones who sleep through the storms uh very tall again very large people but they're thin they look thin because of their height and they dress in like oh hell it's like a real light silk but it's not flowing type of clothing it's like cut to fit move close to one of them and ask them to tell you about themselves they're ancient people. They're uh, they're dying. It's past their time or age. Tell me about this. They're very philosophic about it. They're looking for a, a way to survive, and they just can't. Can't seem to get their way out. They can't seem to find their way out. So they're hanging on while they look or wait for something to return or something coming with the answer. What is it they're waiting for? There uh, evidently was a, a group or a party of them that went to find a new place to live. It's like I'm getting all kinds of over overwhelming input of the corruption of their environment. It's failing very rapidly, and this group went somewhere, like a long way to find another place to live. What was the cause of the atmospheric disturbance or the environment disturbance? I see a picture of a, a picture of like a, oh, hell, it's almost a warp in a, oh, God, this is difficult. It's like going... Let's see, the raw data. Oh, I get a globe. Uh, it's like a globe that goes through a comet's tail or it's through a river of something, but it's all very cosmic. It's like space pictures. All right, now before you leave this individual, ask him if there is any way that you, ask him if he knows who you are and if there's any way you can help him in his present predicament. All I get is that they must just wait. Doesn't know who I am. Thinks he perceives I'm a hallucination or something. <laughs> okay, when the others left, these people are waiting. When the others left, how did they go? You get an impression of, uh, don't know what the hell it is. It looks like the inside of a larger boat. Very rounded walls, shiny metal. Go along with them on their journey and find out where it is they go. Impression of a really crazy place with volcanoes and gas pockets and strange plants. Very volatile place. It's very much like going from the frying pan into the fire. Difference is there seems to be a lot of vegetation where the other place did not have it. And different kind of storm. All right, it's time to come back now to the sound of my voice. Into present time to right now, the 22nd of May, 1984. The sound of my voice. Move now back to the room, back to the sound of my voice, back further. Now to the sound of my voice on the 22nd of May, 1984. End of interview. Wild. Pretty wild stuff, folks. Uh, Insinuates uh, so much what I think they're trying to get at. I mean, like maybe they knew of of, Mars of Martian life already, sure. or at least just presupposed it, and they were like, or, let's find out what happened to them. 
Or maybe they had some kind of technology that let them see beneath the surface of Mars so they could kind of do like exoarchaeology and then they were sending these remote viewers out there. Who knows? Very crazy stuff. It sounds like what we heard was, though, like the la- the survivors as the Martian core cooled. Yeah. And they started to yes. lose their magnetic field. And maybe the place they went was Earth. <gasps> huh? Huh? It is weird. Is. It is plants. weird that in like the... Uh, timeline of planets you do have mars as like a very wet planet that would have had vegetation and shit yeah and then that dies and then just as that dies earth begins to form life pretty wild pretty wild stuff out there folks thank you so much for listening to werewolf radar uh we hope that you practice astral projection i know i will be let us know give it a go experiments go we're very interested to see what you think about all of this um Come check us out on twitch.tv forward slash werewolf underscore radar, where we will be astrally projecting into the internet to play Dungeons and Dragons uh, every Monday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Sometimes we play other things, but mostly you can find one of us or all of us there playing some kind of mm-hmm. game at that time. Come join us. It's fun. We're Please in give the us- nine hells, baby. Nine hells, baby. Night Bastard goes to hell. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Please give us five stars wherever you can give us five stars, Spotify, iTunes, or Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called these days. You can I think follow it's us. iCast now. iCast yeah. pod. Yeah, I, I don't know. Give us your stars. You Apple people, <laughs> give us stars. <laughs> um, you can follow us on threads. You can mm-hmm. follow us on X. Yep. as we all try to find our place in the great social media diaspora uh, that is oh. currently happening. But the most regular place to find us is werewolfradar.com. Yeah. You can just go there. You can check out articles. You can check out all kinds of shit. You could even go to patreon.com forward slash werewolfradar if you want to become a Patreon member, which will net you a full app additional episode every week something we call the grave nugget along with other goodies including art and fiction and uh merch and all kinds of shit you see you become a dark council member you can come and hang out with us while we're recording the pod shout every out Sunday. to janet bravo cheesebot for coming kicking in the zoom room everybody else who's ever been in or out uh we miss you come back come watch we know that it's you're out there on your uh various assignments uh, doing doing what you do, but you know, regardless of if you can uh, help us out in that way or not, we love you. Thank you so much for listening to the show. On the count of three, our sign off line: one, two, two three. three. Punch, Punch the, the sky, sky. Spaceman, Spaceman Joe. Joe. Also, we have a tweet storm coming up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, an X storm. Get ready for it. <laughs>